it's early January here in the solar shed, so it's a little bit on the chilly side in the north of England. What is it at the moment? Uh, 3 degrees C, that's uh, 37 degrees Fahrenheit for those that prefer those numbers. Um, but yeah, actually, yesterday morning when I got in my car on the way to work, the indicator said it was minus 3 and that's the coldest I've seen it certainly this winter. And perhaps my brain works a bit different to most people's, but I wasn't thinking about ice on the road to work. No, I was thinking about my 18650s. And here's a pair of 18650s, which I use in my lithium iron pack. And uh, these are Samsung 26Cs. And looking here at the data sheet, and I did actually find this via the DIY Powerwalls forum, we can see that the operating temperature here, you should only charge these cells in positive figures, 0 to 45 degrees C, and discharge them only as low as minus 10. So am I getting a bit close to that limit here in the shed? And it's at times like this where I turn to my eBay items, which I haven't used. And uh, yeah, that's the right box. What's in here? Well, we've got a non-contact mains, um, a thing in me bob, uh, a TP, something or other, charging IC. Um, oh, and some motorcycle electric heated grip handles. Rapid heating, low temperature resistance wire. That could be interesting. Oh, and uh, what's this? Um, that looks interesting as well. So let's open up the heated grips. What have we got in here? Some wire, some tape, which might come in handy. You never know. Um, some heat shrink tubing, some pretty wide heat shrink tubing, some useful instructions, and uh, two heating elements. Now I'm pretty sure the idea here is you wrap these heating elements around your handlebars, you uh, find the heat shrink tubing, you pop that over the top, if I can manage to do it, and then you presumably heat the shrink tubing and uh, connect these to your motorcycle. And there is a switch, which is rather handy. Um, the wires there and the end, and there is a little bracket for that switch so you can uh, attach it to your motorbike. So they look very handy indeed. Now these uh, seem to have a metallic uh, conductor in there weaving its way backwards and forwards. These seem to be sort of riveted in the end of these uh, connectors and a bit of Kapton tape to um, insulate them. And of course, these are designed that they can be at both sides of your handlebars. So the wire is uh, reasonably long. The uh, switch there, I guess that's designed to go on your handlebars as well. Although I would question whether that's gonna suffer in the elements and then yeah just the two cables coming out of the end now i can't see any markings on those cables um this suggests that it is 24 awg so i'm guessing these don't pull a huge amount of current um let's uh well let's give them a go i guess there must be 12 volts i guess because uh well that's what most motorcycles work on isn't it Okay, so if I power these from my Rui Deng DC to DC converter, I've set it to 12 volts, and at the moment it's set to 400 milliamps, but straight away that 400 milliamps is being eaten up and it's only sitting at 2 volts, so uh, let's increase that a bit. Um, these are now drawing 1.6 amps, and uh, yes, they're definitely warming up a little bit so that switch is on that's good to know and uh, yeah they are warming up a tad so i've left these running a little bit and i have to say they are nicely warm they're not hot 
but they are helping keeping my fingers warm here in the shed at 12 volts they're drawing 1.6 amps well that's just under 20 watts so i guess these are 10 watt heating element something like that so um yeah these are just making things just a nice nice temperature what have we got there now we've been on for a little while sort of the mid 30s mm, tipping up to 40 degrees and this one mm, doesn't seem to be performing quite as well but 30 degrees is is well it's quite nice isn't it now with the heating elements cooling down a little bit i want to have a look at this as well and this again is another ebay purchase and uh, this is a little module here and it's a temperature um controlled relay basically there's the relay and apparently it says here at 14 volts dc it can uh, support up to 20 amps there are three little tactile buttons there set plus and minus and uh, it takes a little uh, thermistor here I guess it's a standard is it 10k type that feels quite cold in itself and uh, down here you give it 12 volts positive there ground and uh, ko and k1 well presumably that's yeah normally open and uh, normally closed so you can use this to uh, turn on and off devices depending on a temperature Okay, so let's try and power this up. 12 volts on my DC to DC converter. And yeah, that's working. Um, let's see if I can find some red tape. That'll be in the tape box. Well, red tape seems to work every time, doesn't it? But we can see that the uh, seven segment display here is obviously being multiplexed 8.6. I'm assuming it's reading 8.6 degrees which uh, i think is a little bit high but uh, we can account for that perhaps uh, no instructions supplied with this little module and in fact it's been such a long time that it's been in my unused ebay box uh, that actually i've got no idea where i bought it from presumably ebay um so there's the set button the uh, positive and the negative button uh, presumably pressing set um, shows 50 okay so it's set to 50 is it and the positive obviously goes up and the negative uh, goes down but sadly it doesn't seem like holding that tactile switch down oh it does it just takes a little while so um, I guess I might want to turn these heating elements on at zero degrees or thereabouts so let's uh turn it down in fact look the red light's gone on now there that little led has gone on uh, because the temperature is above what it's showing here so yeah if i set that to say four degrees press set it now thinks it's 8.3 degrees so hang on a minute have i got that the wrong way around so yeah here we can see when i've set this to four degrees this switch to switch at four degrees and currently it thinks here in the shed it's 8.2 uh, this led here is on so uh, it thinks the relay is on but of course i don't want my heating element to be on when it's above four degrees i want my heating element to be on when it's below four degrees so i need to now turn my attention here to the uh, relay and these two contacts and find out which one is normally open and normally closed uh, because i need to find out which one's going to be live when this temperature dips so i'm going to check with my multimeter if i check that point there no voltage showing up that point there um some voltage showing up less than half a volt uh, but definitely nothing on that one hmm perhaps the 12 volt supply to this module does not supply the relay so looking at this module here we have the two terminal points here 
and uh, they connect through to these points here. Um, this must be the common point here at the top, um, and uh, of course the uh, the switch effectively of the relay will be sat uh, in that sort of position between the common point and this normally closed pin. Um, but when the board uh, reaches a higher temperature and turns on, the coil here between these two points is uh, excited with a bit of current and the switch moves over this way to the normally closed position and uh, current can flow between the two terminal posts but of course that's not the way I want it I want current to flow when this is uh, a low temperature so I might just have to uh, tag a wire onto here and uh, not use this uh, terminal post here so I can use one terminal post and uh, this point here so I'm effectively inverting the operation of this little temperature control module so it might be even easier to uh, use the ground point on the back of this module as well so I'll just put some fresh solder on there and uh, yeah we need this normally open no, normally closed. And now I can just uh, tack the heating element onto those points. And this is already a bit thrown together, so let's just put a uh, connector between the positive to the module and uh, the input to the relay and save having to... Uh, put some jumper wires in well that seems to work so I think I've managed to cool down the thermistor to a sufficiently low level if I turn on the power yes it says minus two degrees that's pretty good isn't it so uh, the LED is off which should mean that the heating elements are on and they are warming up 1.6 amps being drawn from my dc to dc converter so yeah they're starting to get a little bit warm and uh, yeah i'll get the thermistor obviously you know i've put them in some frozen peas so if i take that out of there that should start warming up let's hold on to it a little bit warm it up a bit quicker and uh, the temperature is rising and uh, well at four degrees but actually we're at 5.9 degrees okay so at six degrees the module has turned on the relay has turned on which actually turns my heating elements off and yeah the dc to dc converter is now just drawing 60 milliamps so that seems to work quite well let's put the thermistor back in the peas let it cool down again and hopefully the LED goes off, the relay goes off, which actually turns it on in my case. And uh, yeah, they start to warm up again. Success! Yes, perhaps it is a success, but uh, how and uh, where I'm going to mount these heating elements, um, hmm, perhaps I should have thought about that. Well, this may not be the best solution I've ever come up with, but I found a couple of things here in the shed, and I have managed to come up with something. I do think there's an important point here, however, that lithium-ion batteries, we talk uh, quite a lot about not overcharging them beyond 4.2 volts, undercharging them be uh, below 3 volts, and there are conversations on how much current you can safely charge and discharge them at as well. But temperature is also an important factor. If we allow these to go too far beyond their maximums and minimums, well, at best, we lose a lot of the capacity. And at worst, well, they fail entirely. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.